Shalom everyone. In fact, Shabbat Shalom everyone. This is Amir. <laughs> I'm with my grand doggy. Um, anyway, I wanted to give you a short update on uh, three things that um, I guess happened in the last couple days. Uh, I guess somebody wants attention here. I'm sorry. Um, anyway, uh, try to ignore uh, Snoopy. Snoopy, te dil mata, te dil mata. Speak. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, um, so um, I'll wait a few more seconds for you guys to uh, connect, and then um, we're gonna talk about some heavy stuff. Okay. So um, again, this one I wish you could. Uh, share with uh, as many people as you can um snoopy okay so again shalom everyone shabbat shalom from galilee from israel this is amir tzalfati uh, i wanted to talk about three things okay three things super important first of all both finland and sweden just announced that they intend to apply for full membership in nato now, Finland, as you know, is bordering with Russia. The exact reason Russia did not want Ukraine to be a member of NATO is a, the reason why Russia is not going to agree for or Finland to be a member of NATO. But Finland is, of course, um, a member of the, uh, the uh, European Union, and so it's a little different. However, Russia made it very clear, very, very clear, that um, this will not go unnoticed. And it is actually, uh, it is actually saying that um, it will have, guys, it will have, they call it symmetrical uh, response, which means um, there has to, you know, what basically they say is this is a threat and they need to expect retaliation. Now, I'm sure that for all those years, Sweden and Finland were not part of NATO. It's because they knew it will upset Russia and because they knew they're not interested in having NATO's uh, presence in, uh, in their soil. Because in a way, once you do that, you're no longer sovereign. You have foreign uh, uh, soldiers in, in your territory as well. However, Russia made it clear that if the two countries, the, the two um, uh, Scandinavian countries will join NATO, it will or it can escalate to nuclear uh, um, war, nuclear change. This is exactly why on May 9th, on the day that they marched in the streets of Moscow to mark the victory over the Nazis, they rolled on the streets their newest um, missiles capable of carrying um, nuclear warheads. That was a message. We intend to use it if we need to. Um, that's number one. So we're talking about Russia. That's number one. Number two, listen to this now. Rafael Grossi, the head of the International Atomic Energy Agency, the IAEI, just came back from uh, Tehran. Uh, and the news is, is this. Iran has enough uranium that is enriched for to 60%. Listen to this. Guys, it's very important. Enough uranium that is already enriched to 60% that literally, if they take all that they have now and they put it in uh, cascades with centrifuges that will work very, very fast, within one week, listen to me, within one week, Iran will have enough kilograms of 90% weapon-graded uranium for at least one bomb. I'm, what I'm trying to say is this. Iran is technically one 
week away from its bomb. Now, let me, let me explain what happened. The Iranians are watching what is going on in the Ukraine. They're also watching what's going on with North Korea and with China. The Iranian understand that the best way to preserve their regime is to already have at least one nuclear bomb, and then nobody will mess up with them. The Iranians understand that had Ukraine not gave up its nuclear weapon, Russia would have never invaded right now. The Iranian understand that nuclear weapon is not necessarily to use it tomorrow, but it's their insurance policy that nobody will mess up with them or try to topple their regime. So Iran is one week away from nuclear bomb. I don't even know if you really get it. Russia threatens to use nukes. Iran is a week away from nuclear um, um, weapons. And if you follow me on Telegram, and I try to tell people to do that, but then I'm not sure why they don't. If you try to, I just reported also that the new president of South Korea just said that there are many indications that North Korea is about to perform another nuclear test. My point is this, the world moved from, uh, to a, a new level, a level of, we're not even talking about conventional war anymore. Everybody's waving with nuclear weapon. Everybody wants to test nuclear weapon. Everybody's on the race for nuclear weapon. Nuclear weapon now is the next thing. Now, it doesn't mean that we're talking about a bomb that will destroy half of the world. Tactical nuclear bombs are smaller. They can cause a lot of damage, but they can destroy, I guess, a third of a city or something like that. Not necessarily the whole globe. But the point is, we moved up to a new level of threats all around the world. So it's very important that you know that. North Korea, Iran, Russia, these things are happening right now and they're happening before our very eyes. So we have to be very, very aware of that. On the other hand, let me tell you, um, one of the, I mean, the Palestinian terror is still, uh, you know, all around in the West Bank city of Jenin. Today, there was an operation to apprehend a terrorist whom we believe is responsible for the killing of the journalist a couple of days ago because we have a video of him shooting. So we came to arrest him. An Israeli um, special forces soldier uh, was killed and one of the canine dogs that uh, we brought with us was killed as well. But uh, 11 terrorists were wounded and, and the wanted terrorist that we came to arrest has been arrested. Um, the Palestinian Authority, of course, did not want Israel to take any part in the investigation of the killing of the terrorists for obvious reasons. They know that uh, once they, they allow us to also check, things will look different. But um, it's very interesting because uh, they see that there's a lot of rage in the Palestinian streets, but there is no international rage from governments. There's nothing. In fact, uh, the United Arab Emirates is mourning the death of its leader today. Sheikh Khalifa bin Zayed, 73 years old, died today. And 40 days of mourning were declared in the United Arab Emirates. And uh, Israel uh, immediately um, offered condolences to the Emirati people. Um, we see for the first time Saudi investment fund investing in Israel. Saudi money officially invested in Israel. So the efforts of the Palestinians to somehow create and as isolation of Israel and all of that is not working. This is why they're so angry. Uh, people are not buying. In fact, uh, the opening speech uh, in the uh, British Parliament, Prince Charles, who for the first time replaced the Queen in the speech, first time ever, I think, since she uh, became Queen, Queen Elizabeth 
uh, was not there giving a speech at the uh, open session of the UK Parliament. And Prince Charles, in his 10 minutes long uh, speech, also mentioned that the UK will not allow uh, activity of boycott, dissect, and, uh, and the sanction uh, against Israel. The uh, international United Nations definition of anti-Semitism is also whoever is anti-Israel is anti-Semitic because we're the Jewish nation. You cannot hide behind, uh, you know, I can hate Israel and hurt Israel and yet still not be counted as an anti-Semite. A lot of Palestinian, um, you know, organizations are very, very angry right now because they're getting dried for money. The uh, EU stopped funding the Palestinian Authority because of the incitement in their textbooks and the corruption in their government. U.S. under Trump stopped funding the Palestinian Authority because of the Taylor Force bill that was passed. Uh, that uh, as long as the Palestinian government funds or pays stipends to terrorist families, U.S. will not give them a dime. And Arab countries stop funding the Palestinian Authority because they see how corrupt they are as well. So, believe it or not, the only one that is funding the PA right now is the government of Israel. We're basically collecting their taxes and giving them billions of uh, dollars every month. And that what keeps them uh, surviving, which is very, very, you know, I don't know what to say about this government. Again, it's beyond me. But what I can tell you folks is that, um, so we're, we're watching something very, very interesting. Oh, one last thing I forgot. Remember, remember we started with Finland and Sweden? Guess who is against it? If you follow me on Telegram, you already know. Guess who is against it? Erdogan. Erdogan said today, where Turkey is not in agreement with it. Why is it so important? First of all, everybody's like, why would he say that? Well, he would say that if he wants to pay back a favor to Putin. But he would also say that because if one NATO member is not for this uh, uh, new members to join, then they cannot join. The charter of NATO requires a, a, a complete unanimous uh, vote um, or to accept it. And Turkey is the second largest military of NATO. And if they are not going to allow it, it won't happen. So you have the threat of nukes from Russia. You've got this alliance of Turkey and Russia that surprises NATO. You got Iran a week away from a bomb. And you've got the Sunni Arab world actually on our side investing in Israel. And the Palestinians attempt to burn the, the area and to get some attention is just failing. We stepped up to a new level of threats in this world. We stepped up to a new level of, of warfare in this world. And I want to tell you folks, I'm not here to scare anyone because, you know, believers should not be scared anyway. If anyone, non-believers should be very scared, not just from nukes, but from all the great tribulation that is about to come. But I want to tell you folks, I encourage all of you to read 2 Corinthians, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 5 today and read it very, very carefully, okay? Last thing I want to say, I want to thank all of you who... Uh, got the book Revealing Revelation. Many of you already finished it. Um, yesterday, we got the uh, amazing news that it, it got to number one in the Wall Street Journal bestsellers list, number two in Publishers Weekly bestseller list, and number five in USA Today bestsellers list. These are secular bestseller lists. This book is the first Bible prophecy, pure, pure Bible that reaches three, three lists, the top list of bestsellers, and these are all secular. Why is, is it so important? Because a lot of people wants to buy books that are on the bestsellers list. And these are non-believers, 
necessarily and they want to see why is this a bestseller this is exactly why we wanted many people to pre-order because that what made it into that list and now tons of people will get it trying to understand why is it a bestseller so that was the tactic behind it and i hope you understand it many people are writing us calling us or posting on social media that this book finally sealed it for them in the understanding of revelation the understanding of pre-tribulation rapture and all of these things i want to thank you for getting it if you haven't gotten it yet you can uh, get it on on amazon or uh, you can go to target walmart or even to hobby lobby and you'll find those books there um uh, again new new era has begun where nuclear war is now on the table i want to encourage all of you to follow the lord to um be in the word and to remember to read second corinthians chapter 5. again thank you god bless you please share this video with as many people